Hello everyone and welcome to episode 65 of the Pokemon Soul Lock. That's right, 65. Two and a half months that we have been uploading, not two and a half months, two months and five days <clears throat> that we have been uploading the Soul Lock. Well, it's been a little longer than that with a couple, couple little breaks in between. But about to say, can't say straight anymore, but yeah, but, um, I mean, we're going, we're going, Ooh, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. We'll, I'll, I'll hyper voice that. Um, we'll keep going. So last episode we were talking about, uh, content platforms and we, we were talking, we got a little, a little sidetracked, but we were talking about Twitch and Twitch's algorithm and how the recommended works, but for their new system to pick up where we left off. And if you're here, I'm gonna assume you were there. And if you weren't there, I recommend checking out that previous video. I recommend checking them all out because it's a roller coaster of emotions. Um, <laughs> um, but with the new system, when you have one of your community members pay to promote your uh, channel, you are buying thumbnails on someone's recommended. That's what you're realistically getting. You're not paying to put someone on the front page. You're paying to put someone on indiscriminate people's recommended channels. So let's say that we were playing Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Let's say, let's for, for the example, let's say we were playing the Soul Lock, okay? And we, for, I, I think for like $3, you get a thousand thumbnail views, right? A thousand impressions on Twitch. If those thousand impressions go to people that only want to watch first person shooters, that is worthless promotion <laughs> because they're never going to click that content. <laughs> and I, that sounds harsh. That sounds very harsh. And I, I'm sorry that it does, but broadly promoting your content and just trying to get views on that thumbnail is is one thing but on a system like twitch which has what's uh what devin nash um called a kingmaker system which is the highest performing content creators snowball their performance because they're at the top of directories and as people come in they're clicking that content more and more often um those uh content creators are the ones that will benefit the most from that system, if at all. Whereas on YouTube, uh, I think you can pay to promote on YouTube, but YouTube's algorithm does such a good job of just promoting your content that you really don't need to. Like even, even, so I'll, I'll look at it. So let me, let me go here. <clears throat> So, let me go to one of our previous soul locks. So, I'm going to go back to episode 53. Woo. That one video, uh, currently, is sitting at 93 impressions. Mm -hmm. So, 100 people, almost 100 people have at least seen that thumbnail pop up in the recommended. <clears throat> but on YouTube, that content just exists. Forever. It never goes away. It nothing ever happens to it. Whereas on a platform like Twitch, uh, as a an affiliate, we're an affiliate over on uh, on Twitch. I think my uh, vods stay up for mm -hmm. thirty days, and at the end of thirty days, they get deleted into the Nether. If you're a partner, you get sixty or ninety days. I think affiliate can have sixty, it but your be. point still stands. It might be. But I'm after of what Danima has access to, after that time period, though, that content just goes away. So unless you're download, unless you're downloading those wands, and then cutting that together with video, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt, um, that content is just lost, and you never get any other value out of that content. Which is super. It's unfortunate. It's super unfortunate. <clears throat> um. With that being said, the threshold for monetization on Twitch is a lot lower than the threshold for monetization on YouTube. S significantly. Yeah. Significantly. Like, if so you... What... 
go ahead. What do you have to hit for monetization on YouTube? For you someone like a, me, you need a thousand subscribers. Mm -hmm. Keep going. So, a, a subscriber on YouTube is the equivalent of a follower on Twitch. Yeah. Now, granted, again, YouTube's algorithm promotes a lot more than uh, than Twitch will, just in, in the way that it works, right? But in almost two years on Twitch now, I'm approaching 400 followers, mm -hmm. right? Like, I've, I've had a couple big jumps, but I'm approaching 400 followers of just steady, steady growth. Steady, healthy growth, where it's not, like, spiking and dipping and spiking and dipping. It's just right. steadily over time, right? Um, <clears throat> whereas on YouTube, uh, in the last month, we've gained 12 subscribers because there's no cost. It's just it's just subscribing to that content on YouTube. Now, people will subscribe and unsubscribe for that reason because maybe at one point they want to see that content, and then at a later point they don't, right? Which will happen. Mm -hmm. That's fair. That's super fair. Um... <clears throat> but <sighs> hitting I'm, I'm wondering how long it's going to take us to hit a thousand subscribers you have to hit a thousand subscribers and you need to have four thousand watched hours we are going to hit our four thousand watched hours well before we hit the subscribers at the yeah. at the current rate that we're at because we are currently with, with, with the amount of watched hours that you generate from a stream like the um the stream I was talking about last time where we we got like 1900 impressions from our our uh Destiny 2 stream that had almost 130 watched hours just on that okay. one stream cuz that's cumulative, right? Right. Um so the the amount that you build up is very oh I almost one shot that C dot. Sorry about that, buddy. Um, is it also healing the PP for my moves? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. full heal. Yeah, we're, we're, Draws is, Draws is going through the roof. Straight stonks right now. Um, I'm interested. I'm, I'm interested to see where, where YouTube goes for us. Um, but in something like I've talked about in the past, and I started to talk about it last time when I got sidetracked. Big surprise. Um, I get nervous about localizing all of my content on one platform, um, just for the, like, I, at some point, I will do something to upset the YouTube gods, and I will catch a timeout, right? Um, I don't plan on that happening regularly. I've never had it happen on Twitch, knock on wood. Um, but, <clears throat> uh, if, if, as a content creator, if you throw all of your eggs in one basket... <clears throat> and something happens to where you can no longer post on that content platform, mm -hmm. you have, best case, halted your progress. Worst case, potentially put all of that progress at risk, if that makes sense. It does. Because after, after you catch a couple bands, like you, like there, I, I think there's levels to it. I think there's definitely some sort of um, context you know, to when when someone catches a band, but uh, like I've I've seen other content creators that have just had a computer make a mistake when applying a band, and then that even when that band is released, that negative mark is on their permanent record, right? On YouTube, right? And then so they, they you know they catch another band or two, and they are permanently removed from that platform, and, and that's a ton of hard work that is just down the drain. Now, for content creators of that size, the one I'm speaking about, I don't want to put out names, but for the one I'm speaking about, if that did happen, I don't know. I don't know what the rules are for making a new account. Like, if you if you get removed from a platform like that, are you allowed to make another account? I mean, I guess it depends on whether the platform is using IP bans or account bans. Let's say it's an account ban. I mean, if it's an account ban, then the general consensus would be, yes, you can make another account. So for a larger creator, that probably would not be... It would be hurtful. It would be incredibly detrimental, but it would be ultimately something they could probably come back from. Right. Um, 
you know, at that point, when you've, when you've hit a certain level of success with content creation, you've probably also got a social media following this and the other. So you'd probably be able to build back. But it's, right. it's a setback, right? Like, when you're, when you're talking about content creation and growth, it's, it's less about how your performance is day to day and what your mm-hmm. growth is. You know what I mean? If that yes. makes sense? Like that's that's been that's always been my metric that I've I've used for how I'm doing uh, with my content is I want to see where are we trending like where where is it going where mm-hmm. where can I plan on ending up in six months where 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 can I realistically set a goal a year from now right um and I I'd, I'd like to see us hit monetization level in a year on YouTube. Okay. I think that's a reasonable goal. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know. I think so. Based off just what what we're talking about for... I mean, it also depends on the content. People might just not like my content. <laughs> there's, a, there's a group of people that like my content, for sure. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, it depends on how far that niche is able to spread out, right? Right. And the internet's a big place. The internet's a big place. I've so I've I've watched um I watch a lot of like analytical content. We're talking about like mm-hmm. um breaking down what different metrics actually mean and, and this, that, and the other. And um an argument that you'll hear from folks a lot, or something that you hear from folks a lot, is that Oh, well, you don't want to play such and such game because it's oversaturated. This is oversaturated, that's oversaturated. People grossly underestimate how large the internet is. <laughs> Not wrong. Almost nothing is oversaturated on the internet enough that if you're putting out quality content, or at least even something that someone wants to listen to, mm-hmm. that they'll watch it, right? And, yep. and let us know down in the comments below what you think. You know, do you do you agree with me that there, like, is no such thing really as, like, oversaturation? Or are you just tired of seeing a million uh, Fortnite YouTubers? So, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my two cents. Okay. Um, I think that there is, to a certain level, a point where a field is oversaturated. But when I think of oversaturation, it's not there's too many content creators. It's more of what percentage of the viewers on that like who are watching that platform who are watching that game are on how many streams because if you are watching let's say destiny 2 we both play it we both love it what you find is that about 45 percent of the population watching destiny 2 is watching the top three top four streamers i'd say it's higher than that yeah i'd say it's higher than 45 percent I, I was being generous, but it's I, to I a would, point. I would say your av- actual number would probably be closer to sixty percent, if not a, even a little higher than that. Not if you've I only got go three to top three to five. Not if I only go top three to five. Okay, you've got you've got to think about how many people stream to zero viewers, like on Twitch. Yes. Which, which by the way, a whole another th- that's a whole other thing. But let me finish before we get into that. Okay. Um, but that I would say is not oversaturated. Okay. If you've well, got 40, let's let's go low. Let's say let's if you've got 30% of a population of 90,000 people watching Destiny 2, watching not the top 8, then at that point it is something that's not oversaturated because there are people who aren't even on the front page who are getting a decent spread of the viewership. Okay. Alternatively, Let's say you really want to go stream insert game here and you look and it's got 5,000 viewers and only four people streaming. That's not saturated until one of them is a variety streamer who has 4,998 views. And you've got Joe and Danny over there with one view a piece and you've got Andy over there who doesn't even have his own stream pulled up. Or content That's creators. oversaturated that may find themselves here at this point in this video 
If you are, promote your channel in the comments. I'll make sure to check it out. Regardless, if you stream on Twitch, if you stream anywhere, don't ever stream to zero viewers. Don't do it. When you could be your first viewer. <laughs> you are your first viewer. Okay? Literally, you pull it up on your phone. Have it sitting there. So with, with streaming, uh, I'm going to reference him again, a gentleman named Devin Nash. And if you're into content creation or you're just generally into analytics and um, different uh, looks at um, entrepreneurship and that kind of stuff, he puts out really, really great content. Really, really great content. Um, but he talked about when you have something like Twitch, like a live service viewing platform, the, as folks pop in and hang out uh, in, a, in a stream, the more people that watch a stream, the more people are willing to stop in on that stream. So, like, as you have 10 viewers, if someone is scrolling through the, uh, the, the, the directory on whatever, on, Twi on Twitch, right? They're scrolling through the Destiny 2 directory, and they see you have 10 viewers you are more likely to get the click of someone than someone that only has three viewers or two viewers because subcon even even if sometimes it might be consciously but even subconsciously as you're scrolling through 10 other people are willing to watch that content creator so there has to be some value there if there wasn't there wouldn't be 10 people watching um unfortunately this, this plays into, and again, another video by Devin Nash, people view botting on Twitch. And so, uh, referencing some of Twitch's own internal communications, he had talked about anywhere upwards of, like, the top, um, like, the top, top percent of creators, it was, like, 90% of creators had, had used or had had a viewbot used on their channel to promote them on that platform. There's a couple ways that it's done. So one way is the not legal way, will get you banned way, is that people will go on and make a bunch of fake emails, make a bunch of fake accounts, and then you know run a bunch of like separate instances where your stream is being watched. Right, and it, people will boost themselves that way. And there's there's ways that you can tell, and he goes into that. And if you want to see more of that, look him up, Devin Nash, and you can see that video. But the other way that people will do it is they will embed their stream on websites. That one I know. <laughs> so, like, uh, the, the example that he used, Fextra Life, they are a games wiki online page. Like, they do, like, a lot of Dark Souls 2 guides and stuff like that. Like, games like that, they, they do guides. But the... Fextra Life Twitch stream was embedded on the Fextra Life website. And so if you go to the website, you count as a view on that stream. Yep. Um, which is insane, but it works. Because when you are doing view botting and stuff like that, and then you suddenly have a couple hundred or a couple thousand viewers, other people are willing to stop in and go, hey, what's going on with this guy? You know, what's what's the deal? What what's your opinion on that lightsaber? Uh so first of all, I've actually been in a channel that was viewbotted in an incredibly negative way. Which happens. Uh, that's the only conscious viewbotting that I've ever been a part of. Um as far as the As far as view button goes, I'm always against it. I'm always going to be against it. Um, it it's literally cheating. Uh, but <laughs> it's literally the, cheating. The embedding is where it gets kind of weird for me. Well, and evident, evidently there are sites that you can go on, and and I haven't looked. In, and again, this is all information that I've got from watching videos online. From, yep. from other content creators reporting on it. Uh, 
Had I engaged in that behavior, I'd hope my content creation journey would be a little further along than it is. I have not. <laughs> um, but what, what some online services will do is you pay them X amount of money and they will embed a single pixel of your stream on some site that's getting like 100,000 hits a day. And that single pixel muted counts as a, a view. It, yeah, you literally can take a single pixel. You can take Interesting. a you can take a single pixel of a stream, embed it on a website, and that counts. That fully counts. Isn't that insane? That's super that's weird. That's hollow viewership. Like, what's the like separate of like the fake it till you make it thing, which is literally what that is, right? What's the purpose of that? What is? How does that help you? Yeah, at least if it's embedded, like fully embedded on a website, it could Maybe. be someone's watching the guide and or then like they look at like, oh, someone's playing it right now. Let's see where they're at. Yeah. Like I can, that, that's why I'm kind of torn on the whole um, embedding. It's almost, it's almost advertising at that point, if that makes sense. Um, I just, I'd really like to see a better, a better system for Twitch, but I, I don't, I, with the way, Twitch would need an overhaul. Twitch would need a complete overhaul. Why are you using flare bits on a water-based Pokemon? Why are you doing that, C-Dog? <clears throat> and you hit with recoil. You literally hit with recoil on a fire move on a water Pokemon. Why are you the way you are? Um, Twitch would need a complete overhaul with the way it's viewing works. Like, it, right now, it auto-sorts you top to low. And you can set your preferences to sort to recommended in a category, but that's a, you have to toggle that. Like, you have to click that, and it would need to be the default setting that you go to a category and there are recommended streamers for a system like boosting your recommendations to really work. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it, I do. It's, it's, it's so odd. kind of scary. How scary is this? That's pretty scary. Hurry. Oh, hot take. That's a heal? Or a switch? Nah. That's... Nah, that's... fam. <laughs> You think I risk that crit? <laughs> you know how many times you or I have said, I'll just heal this. And the other person just staring at it, going out loud or in their head. Yeah, until this next one crits. Crits. Three, two, there it goes. See, that's a better use of Flare bit. Blitz on a Sceptile. Sceptile is such a cool looking Pokemon. It is. I'm definitely glad that with Sceptile, they moved away from the quadrupedal uh, grass starters, even if it was just for one so they could try something new. Because Venusaur was pretty cool, and then Meganium was not. Meganium was definitely the weakest of that generation, because you, you could either have Meganium, or you could have Feraligator, or you could have uh, Quilava. Quilava, Fire Pathogen. Weasel... Typhlosion, thank you. Uh, However, like, angry I'm fire weasel. Off. I'm gonna cut you off. And we're gonna pick this back up in the next episode. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for episode 65. We're gonna be back hopefully tomorrow. We'll see how the schedule cranks out. We're gonna continue this grind and we're, I don't know about you, I'm looking at least 45 across the board walking out of this place. Yeah. I'm thinking I, closer I think to good, like, I think that's a good four, place to wind up like 45 or even 50 on one. We'll see where it goes. But guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you tomorrow. Y'all have a good one. Take care.